when people meet me for the first time, they are curious, of course. You know, it's like, is that your real hair color? Who's your hairdresser? As someone sort of just shouting albino at me. And it's like, oh yeah, I didn't know that. Thank you very much for the update. They want you to feel uh, different. And they want you to feel like an outsider. And they want you to feel sad. But will I give that to them? Of course not. To have albinism is not to have melanin, uh, not to have pigment. It can be only your eyes, skin, hair, and so on. So I grew up in Hong Kong, and I'm a very small minority looking the way I did. I think it took me quite some time before I kind of realized that I looked different. Probably my parents said something to me like, uh, you are different and there are things about you that are different. You will, you know, you have light sensitive skin and light sensitive eyesight. But that's the way it is. I think they made my siblings aware of it as well. So they help me out that way when I need help. For example, if we're walking and there's sun on one side and there's shade on the other side, then they will walk on the other side where the shade is because that would help me. I mean, they could go and get themselves a tan but I kind of never fancied it because it seems such a hard work to lie in the sun and fry. I remember one day my sisters came home from school and they were very excited and they said, we saw someone, uh, a girl who looked just like you. You know, she was all grown up and she had uh, pale skin and white hair and I thought, oh, I will be all right. In Hong Kong, there are not many people who look like me then you start to wonder where they are. And I think just knowing that this person actually walking out and about and seemed to be quite independent, that sort of gave me the impression that she's not hiding. She is living life. If she's out there looking like me and she's okay, then I will be this person as well. I will also be happy and independent and a person in my own right. Once we were in the shop and this girl just sort of like, uh, stared at me, just literally just stared and stared. And she didn't say a word. She just glowed and just looked at me and looked so happy. I was like, oh my God, what's happening? She stared for like, I don't know, a minute or two, you know. And then she just walked away. And, and she didn't want anything more. But I think maybe just because I am aware that I look different, then you kind of want to suss out why that person is interested. That's when I can be a bit guarded. Once I was just, I, I, I'd just done a photo shoot and I was just on my way to the bus stop and I saw this guy uh, sort of looking at me and then he ended up on the same bus stop. And then he kind of said, like, I really like your style. We'd like to go and have a cup of coffee with you. And, and I kind of felt like he was only attracted to that little part of me. That's when it feels a bit more superficial. And that's when I kind of, uh, nothing that I want to get involved with. I have Japanese people coming up to me, speaking Japanese to me. I have English people asking me if I'm English. I have people asking me if I'm Irish. I think I enjoy that possibility. My name is Konishio and I want to dispel the myth that albinism is limiting. The world is uh, bigger than you think, actually.